And it just happened really fast. So yeah, as you said, this is not a crypto event. This is just a liquidity event. I use you know, monetary tightening as in the rate of change of monetary tightening plus commodity prices, plus inflation, all of this stuff and the dollar. I think it's the largest tightening of monetary conditions in all economic history as far as I can find. And it just happened really fast. So yeah, as you said, this is not a crypto event. This is just a liquidity event and it's happening. I mean, look at the oil market today. Everyone's super bull on oil. Last thing I heard, somebody had a $350 price target. It's down 10% today alone. Yeah, exactly. And right, and it starts to get to the like, wait, shit, is it that everything is down because we need to spend all our money on oil or is oil down because you don't have any money to spend left on oil? Like, like, you're like, what's the narrative even anymore? Uh, well, I think it's a combination of the two, right? Because what you've done is created demand destruction. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is I think we're just shifting between um, what was inflation fears to now is what is a growth collapse. And for me, that's actually pretty bullish to the longer longer duration assets like tech that got smashed and crypto that got smashed. At least it's less specific. I mean, it, look, everything applies to everything to some extent. But as long as the big fear was really on like inflation and liquidity, that specifically is going to hurt things that had huge capital inflows more than anything else. And it's going to hurt, as you said, longer duration plays relative to like oil and bread. Um, but if it really is just an overall economic event, that will still hurt everything. Um, but 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 the, the spread is going to change there. And I, I also think for what it's worth that like, you know, people often get a little bit interesting to be sort of like sidetracked when thinking about inflation, where, you know, it's easy to see, you know, the dollar, you know, inflation in the dollar. And then you see all these graphs go up and you're like, holy shit, that's like an enormous economic change. And then all of a sudden the Fed starts tightening policy and all the numbers go back down and you're like, holy shit, every day. And, but to some extent, it's just the stock split in the US dollar, right? Like, like that's like one way to think about this. And 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 if that's how you think about it, the whole thing's kind of like a little bit of a sideshow. I, I don't want to like over, you know, sort of like state that point. But 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 then when you start talking about the actual economy, about like, are we producing less shit now? Like that's real bad. And 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 I think that that is also a lot less of like something that hits the financial and financialized sectors and more of like a, you know, there's just less stuff now. One of the things I've been looking at is I was in the markets, I was at Goldman um, during the long term capital crisis and the Asian crisis, right? This is what we saw in crypto was that writ large. It was so similar where there was one or two players who had yep. more leverage than expected amongst a number of counterparties. They all had one big client. That client blows up because of liquidity issues. And it takes everybody down. We've seen this rule book. We've seen this play out before, right? Yep. No, absolutely. And there's absolutely something like that going on here where, you know, I, I think you look at the drop down to 30K in Bitcoin as really being just economically driven, like and driven by macro. Like that there isn't that wasn't very crypto specific. And even the Luna implosion, right? When you actually think about like how much did that affect crypto, the ecosystem outside of Luna. You know, I, I think there's sort of a general sense of like anything whose like future was dependent on like an unpaid stable coin definitely never decreasing that much in price. Like it sort of deserved to, 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 to have like, you know, the ecosystem wasn't pricing in. The, the core ecosystem wasn't pricing in that UST could never depay. Um, and, and so that, 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 you know, I think was actually somewhat limited in terms of like the contagion effect that it had on the ecosystem. Um, but I think when you just have an overall huge credit crunch, like we've seen, that's a more generalized effect, right? And and now you're sort of moving from a world where you're talking about this mostly, you know, as you said, in terms of the, uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of like specifically what is the, um, uh, you know, the effect on like a particular few parts of it to just everyone gets really stressed, like every business high stress increased on, on a financial perspective, um, people not not having nearly as much capital to to deal with it as you would during normal times. Yeah, there was an old client of mine used to gave me an expression that stuck in my mind all the way through my career, which was he who has cash in a recession is king. And yep. it's like you, I can see that you've you know, you, you're in the advantageous situation of having cash in a recession. And 
it, there's opportunity everywhere because the space is not, the dynamics of the space haven't changed in the long run. It's, it's a, a short term phenomena that leads to opportunity, I guess. Oh, certainly there is a lot of dislocation and there are a lot of, you know, potentially really good, um, you know, plays that, that, that one could make here. If, if, if you had infinite capital backing up, you know, that, and of course, no one has infinite capital backing up anything. Um, but you know, there are still good plays if you have like significant, but finite amounts of capital. And, um, uh, and so I think that, you know, one of the things we've been thinking about the most here is just like, you know, given everything that's going on, like, what should we be doing? Like, what is, um, where is it most important that we're deploying our capital right now? And um, what's, what's your answer to that? Yeah, so one piece of this, and, and one of the pieces I think has gotten just the most attention, like like the sort of classic place that you want to look at is something that like would be totally fine except for a really nasty short-term liquidity crunch, right? The closer you are to that sort of like ideal, the closer you are to a place where from every perspective, it's that's where cash should be deployed, right? Both from, from the perspective of like, is there a good investment opportunity there? Probably, but more importantly, from the perspective of like, can you bail out some customers, bail out a company, um, and and stop contagion from spreading in a way which is basically permanent, right? Because it's not like a business that had to go under. Like this is just like, you know, there was going to be effectively an economically inefficient um, crunch in a business because of short-term conditions. So that sort of is a platonic ideal that we're looking for above everything else. And of course, nothing is a platonic ideal, right? Like everything is actually nuanced, and you know, everything at the end of the day, um, it, it, it's all shades of gray and, you know, we understand that and we're not sort of like looking only at perfect systems. Um, but I, uh, but, but that's sort of where we start, you know, and, and then we say, all right, like which places look mostly like that? Like there is like, th th this is like, you know, it's not just like a money pit, you know, we, we don't just want to be throwing good money after bad, you know, on some of these things. Um, but if there are cases where we can, you know, uh, where we can actually really, um, you know, either surface, you know, save a, a, really, a really good business and or where, you know, there's sort of like serious customer protection issues that we can help um, backstop. Um, uh, and, and then probably the biggest thing is like contagion that we can actually stop from spreading, right? Not just like bailing out contagion dollar by dollar, right? But like stopping a bunch of contagion with a smaller capital outlay because it, it stops like the whole process from having to unwind. Those I think are the places that like we are most looking. Yeah. And, you know, distressed investing itself is a very interesting opportunistic, you know, opportunity in itself. And then being able to accelerate your roadmap by doing it is the double whammy, right? It's a perfect state where you can stop contagion spreading because you're the distressed investor or, you know, there's a whole bunch of people who are. And then you get to accelerate the roadmap. Okay, that's that's a great opportunity.